Hello and welcome to another lecture. Today we will be looking at financial forecasting. And what we are going to do is to break this lecture into two, two parts. So in the, um, we will, in the first part we will cover what is financial forecasting, performer income statement and cash budget. And in the second part, we will cover performer balance sheet and percentage of sales method. So here are our learning objective. Explain why financial forecasting is essential for the healthy growth of a firm. Prepare the four financial statements for forecasting. And that's a performer income statement, the performer statement of retained earnings, cash budget and the performer balance sheet. Perform the specific account method and the, the less precise percentage of sales uh, method. Determine the need for new funds by for new funding resulting from sales growth and calculate the required new funds. So what's financial forecasting? Financial forecasting is looking ahead to develop a plan for the future. So just planning to, for the future, uh, creating the necessary groundwork for the company to grow. So it's very important for strategic growth of the firm, providing lead time to make necessary adjustments before actual events occur. And it helps to plan for a significant growth in the firm and can be used as a target for managing performance now often required by bankers and other lenders. The financial planning process involves the following steps. Thinking. Now, in thinking, consider a company's current business as well as challenges and, and opportunities. Then we make we have decision. What direction was the company going? Where is the company going? What co resource commitment is the company or willing to make? Those are decisions that will have to be taken. Planning, development of financial plans and budgets, for example, is part of the planning process. And uh, performance, monitoring, evaluating, taking corrective actions where necessary. So these are what would be on the performance. So two methods of financial forecasting. Using performer or projected financial statement. More exact but time consuming. And two, percentage of sales method, less precise but easier to calculate. So perform a financial statement. We have a performer income statement, performer statement of retained earnings, cash budget, and a performer balance sheet. Now the first step in developing a performer and developing these performer financial statements, we have to start with a sales projection. And the sales projection will guide us as to where uh, other aspects of the business are going. So we start with, uh, here is a, a, a pictorial view of how that would work. We start with a sales projection, which leads into a production plan. If it's a, a manufacturing company, or it's, there should be some purchasing plan if it is just a distributor. Then, create a performer income statement. And the performer income statement will help us to determine cash budget. Of course, other uh, supportive uh, budgets would also uh, be used in determining a cash budget. And an example of such budget would be a capital uh, budget. And then, we have to create a balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet information in the balance sheet would 
b from three uh, main sources prior the prior year balance sheet uh, uh, the balance sheet that was created before uh, this development of the projection the performer income statement and the, the cash budget these three would help uh, would where the information would flow to create the performer balance sheet So let's look a little bit closer at how to do the performer income statement. First of all, it provides a projection of how much profits the firm and the state making over the ensuing period. So if we're looking to say at the we're creating a, a performer income statement for next year, say 2021, then we'll project, um, the projection of how much profit would be made next year. So it involves four steps. Establish, establish a sales projection, determine a production or purchasing schedule, and the associated use of new material, direct labor, and overhead to arrive at the gross profit. So all these are what go into your production. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at your production, you have direct material, direct labor, direct overhead, that would then um, become part of what would help to determine what the gross profit is. Then we're going to compute other expenses, and from that we can determine the profit by computing the performer uh, income statement. So some of the factors that help to determine sales projection, we have both external factors as well as internal factors. So if we start with external factors, there could be a recession or a boom. So the, the economy could be doing very great. Uh, and we know that buying power of persons are, of uh, consumers are looking to purchase, uh, to, the consumers are looking are confident and are willing uh, to go out and spend their money. Or, so that is in a boom. In a recession, um, the, con the economy is down and consumers are unlikely to be active uh, participants in the economy and therefore in such a case um, a business may not do so well. Export sales, a certain market for export. Is there potential for the growth in that market? Or are there issues with that market that may cause uh, export to decline? Consumer spending. Well, we could link consumer spending, of course, with whether there is a recession or a boom in the economy. If, if there is a recession, then consumer spending most likely will be down. If there is a boom in consumer spending, it would most likely be high. Competition. Are there other competitors in, the, the, in this form of business? Are there other persons who are offering similar products that you would have to compete against? Are these competitors strong competitors? Are they weak competitors? Um, so these are some of the issues that you may want to look at with regards to competition. New technology. Are there new technology out there that can cause um, you to to increase your productivity, that cause a company to increase its productivity, or is it that company is stuck with an old, an old technology and are there new technology that your competitors will have? So those are where uh, these external factors could affect uh, the company's uh, sales projection. In terms of internal factors, we have new product lines. Is this a new product line? Is this an old product line? Are there other new product lines? that the company could take on. There is also the turnover in people, in staff. Is there a high turnover? Is the company constantly having to uh, get new staff? Or is it able to, to maintain the current uh, staff co uh, complement that it, it has? Profit target. Is there, what's the profit target that the company willing to set. Um, 
how how did it come to develop that profit target? Employee training. Are they training for employees to ensure that their productivity can be uh, be high or there can be improvement in productivity? Price changes. Will there be a price change in, on the products? Will the price change be an increase or will there be uh, a decrease because there are higher, uh, more competition in the market, for example? So these are some of the internal factors that will be considered in the sales projection. So let's look at an example of how sales projection can be developed and how we can go about creating our performer statement. So let's look at projected wheel and caster for a company for the first six months of let's say 2021. So company selling wheels and casters and the projection is that there will be a thousand wheels that will be uh, sold in the first six months, 2021, and 2,000 casters. Sales price are $30 per unit for wheel and $35 for casters. And the sale revenue would be $30,000 for a wheel and $70,000 for casters for a total of 100000 Now, the stock of inventory, so we may have in inventory um, uh, some stock, right? So we already have wheels and casters in inventory. Quantity, 85 for wheels and 180 for casters. These were have a unit cost of 16 and 20 and of course the unit cost we know will depend on how the evaluation uh, was done in the first place and so we have a total of 1360 for wheel and uh, and 3600 for casters so the total inventory would be 4,960. So, how do we develop our production schedule? Or, it, it could be a purchase schedule, or it could be a combination of, of both, because as, from a manufacturing perspective, you could have to purchase materials and then these materials <coughs> will go into your production. If it's a distributor, <coughs> excuse me, then it would be um, just the purchasing of, of the goods. So we have projected sales in units or it could also be in, in dollars but let's, let's just focus on units. So we have projected sales in units. Then we have a desired ending inventory. So how much inventory would we like to end the period with? Um, what's the amount of inventory we would like to keep uh, in stock? Because what this does is help us to, uh, we are trying to determine how much, uh, what kind of buffer does the company need for going forward at the end of that period? So that buffer will tell us how much, what would be like the desired ending inventory. So we're going to add to the projected sales, the desired ending inventory. But we also have inventory um, that before the projection started. So we're going to take away from that the beginning inventory. And that should equal to what production should be or what purchases should be. So here is a production requirement for six months. So projected unit sales would be a thousand for wheels and two thousand for casters. 
the z ending in vin street we assume to be 10% of the units sales for the time uh, period. So 10% of the 1000 for the wheel and 10% of cost test would give us what our desired ending inventory will be. Next we have beginning inventory and we had our beginning inventory here and it was to fill up from here we have our beginning inventory so it is taken away and then we determine the units to produce so the units to produce for wheels would be 1015 and the units to produce for casters would be 2020 So here we're developing a unit cost and for the unit cost we have material, labor and overhead. So material is $10 and labor is $5 uh, per unit, overhead is $3. So the total per unit cost for wheels would be $18. For casters we have $12 for material, $6 for labor. And four for casters for a total of $22 for casters. That's the total unit cost. And so, how about production costs? So, we know the number of units that we need to produce, and we also know what is the production cost per unit. We have just developed here and now and before that we have determined number of units to produce so based on that we can now determine the total production cost so the total of production cost would be the units to produce in the case of wheels 1015 the cost per unit which is 18 which again from uh, at this schedule here and so we now know the total cost for a unit for wheels would be 18,270 for casters it's 44,440 and my total production cost would be 62,710 So how about allocation of manufacturing costs and determination of gross profit? Let's start with wheels, for example. So we have wheels in first column. Second column, we have casters. And of course, in the third one, we combine both. So here, let's develop our gross profit. So we start with quantity sold, which is a 1,000. For wheels and a thousand for casters, right? From our sales projection, then we know what the price would be for each of them, so we can develop sales revenue based on that. So then we have to determine the total cost of goods sold. So we have old inventory. In the case of wheels, it's 85, and in the case of casters, it's 180. We have cost per unit of 16 for wheels and 20 for casters. And if you wonder where this information comes from, we have it in here, right here. Okay, so this is where the beginning inventory information is coming from. So, we can determine the total to be 136, 1360 for wheels and 3600 for caster. Then we have new inventory, right? Because we now have to go out and purchase, get the difference that is required. So, from, so 
So we started out with the old inventory, and then the difference would be from a new inventory or a new production. So for us to produce the 1,000 units, we have to produce, we first to reach our watts to sell our 1,000 units, we will get 915 from new inventory or from production. So that 915 units will have a unit cost of 18. Remember, if we go back, we see that would be our production cost, which was determined from right here and used here to determine our production. So that nine. 915 units will be produced at $18 for a total cost of 16470 These two will be added together here. Our, our old inventory uh, cost plus the 915 units cost of 1670 will be added together to give us a total cost of goods sold of 1760 and from that you can take your you can take from your sales revenue your total cost of goods sold to arrive at gross profit of 12,070 similarly forecasters would have 2,000 units uh, to be sold at 35 dollars uh, per unit or 70,000 and of course, we had all inventory of 180 units, and those were priced at $20. So the cost for those uh, 120 units of oil would be 3,600. So we need to make up the inventory. The new the, we need to make up the total sales um, by having taken from the new production. So we take 2000 minus 180 which would give us 1820 and these would be priced at 22 dollars per unit to produce 4040 as the cost for those 18,020 units so my total cost in that case would be for casters would be 43,640 so I can now combine my two costs here or right here. So this my total cost of goods sold for both casters and wheels can be combined to be sixty one thousand four hundred and seventy. So we can now have gross profit for just the wheels, and we have gross profit for casters as well as we have combined gross profit. So how about the value of the ending inventory? So you could find that by just um, you could find it by taking the number of units and you could buy the cost per unit to find the ending inventory. So another way is by looking at all the costs that we have developed so far. So we have Beginning inventory of 4960. We have total production cost of 62,780. So that the total inventory available would be 67,670. From that, we can take the cost of goods sold of 61,470. Cost of goods sold of 61,470 to give us ending inventory of 62,200. So that's a 6,200. So now we can develop, uh, we can further develop our performer income statement 
because we have so far gone as far as doing our gross profit. So we have already determined gross profit to be 38,530. So we have gross profit of 38,530. Then we have uh, selling and administrative expenses of 12,000. And of course that produce operating profit or earnings before interest and taxes of 26,530. And uh, we'll take from that interest expense to be 1,500. So these are estimated amounts are based on what, uh, so for example, interest expense here would be based on the company's anticipated uh, loan balance uh, during the period. Uh, how much loan will it be anticipated of having during that period? Equally, selling and administrative expenses could be based on uh, the current selling and administrative um, expenses. It could be that it's anticipated how much will be in the future. So it could be anticipated based on what it currently is. So from that, we can produce earnings before interest and taxes. And if there's a tax rate of 20%, that tax rate would then determine what the tax is. And we can find earnings after taxes. And that would be 20,024. So here we have our changes in retained earnings, which is pretty much what our statement of retained earnings would be. So changes in return earnings, we have common stock dividend to clear of 1500. So our uh, uh, retained earnings would increase by 18,524. So that would how our, uh, what would be the change in the retained earnings. So now let us look at how would we develop the cash budget. So so we started with sales projection. We work our way into reducing our production uh, schedule and then into our our, our producer project project production cost, then into our, sales, into our uh, performer income statement. Now we're going into the cash a budget. So identify, so what does the cash budget do? Uh, what it does, what, uh, how does it help us? It identifies cash shortfall in advance. So we are able to identify the cash shortfall before it actually occurs. Forecast amount available for major expenditure. So if a company will need to, to build a new plant, it will for, it help to forecast uh, what those expenditures are, how much money does a company need um, to have. Uh, it, it needs to go out and, uh, and get that money from whether from debt or from equity, then it may be able to do so early enough to ensure that it's it will be able to, to do it, um, to, con to perform that major expenditure. So the basis of arranging finance, so that's part of what it will be doing. Arranging finance, and that financing could be debt or equity. Shows ability to repair your debt and suggest possible changes in plans. So... Those possible changes in plans could be delay of capital expenditure, or speed up of collection, or reduction in expenses. So the company could decide that if the cash flow is not there, if my budget is not supporting making the, uh, that expenditure, capital expenditure at this time, it could be delayed until another period. Could decide that rather than having um, my 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 Debtors be outstanding for so long, um, my account receivable may decide to speed up the average collection time from say uh, 60 days to 30 days. Or uh, as well as you may choose to lengthen the time period payment for which expenses are made. So rather than an average of making those payments in say uh, 25 days, it's lengthened to say 
what it is. So, how do we develop that uh, guest budget? We'll start by looking at a monthly sales pattern, for example. And here, we determine that the monthly sales pattern would be January, there will be 15,000, uh, February 10,000, March 15,000, April 25, May 15, and June 20. So these could be developed from previous, uh, from the information you have from previous uh, period. Uh, and other information could feed into this by uh, actions that the company, uh, actions that a company is willing to take that could help uh, to enhance sales, for example. So it could be projected that because the company is going to increase its marketing budget, it will be able to expand its sales um, for each period by, say, 10%. So this is how a uh, monthly sales uh, pattern could be developed. So monthly cash flow receipts. So there have to be um, cash coming into the company from its monthly receipts. So earlier we identified this sales pattern here and we have now added the month of December to that. What's the reason for adding the month of December? Um, the month of December is necessary here if we are going to look at uh, cash receipt and if there are credit sales then there may be credit sales from November, from December that need to be collected in January. And of course, it could also be possible that we require um, from November. In this case, that's not the case. So our focus, we just need to add one month, which would be the month of December. So how do we collect that cash? 20% of current sales will be collected and 80% of the previous month's sales. So let's start with a 20% of the current month's sale. So 20% of the current month's sales for January would collect 20% of the 15,000 and that would be 3,000. For February, it's 20% of 10. 2000, March 20% of 15, 3000, April 20% 20, 20 of 5,000, 25,000, and that's 5,000. May is 20% of 15,000, and that's 3000. And June, it will be 20% of 20,000, and that would be 4,000. So, how about 20% of a previous month sale? So, it would be 20% of December that would be collected in January. So, uh, so in January, 20% of in December, we have actually collected 20% of December sale and the rest is now being collected in January. So we collected 96,000 uh, of December's uh, sale in January, 12,000 of January sale in February, 18,000 of February sale in March, 12,000 of February of March sale in April, and 20,000 20, of April in May, and 12,000 of May in June. So we can see what the total cash receipt would look like. All right, so the total cash that would be collected in January, 12,600 in February, 14,000. March 11,000, April 17,000, May 23,000, June 2016,000. So we have to look at the components of cost of the manufactured goods, right? We have wheels again and we have cast and we have units produced of 1,015 and we can break those down into material labor cost, into materials, labor cost, and overhead. So we also know what the cost per unit are in each case. So we have 10, 5, and 3. 
and these were given in a previous table. And the same thing we can also develop for the casters. All right. So what this is going to do is to help us to determine what what cash will have to flow from each of these at, at and at uh, what particular time. So what time during the month? Should it be during this month? Uh, would it be in the next month? So the average monthly manufacturing uh, cost over uh, the six months can be determined um, by looking at our total cost for material over the six months, the total labor, and the total uh, overheads. And we can then find the average monthly cost of those so we can see here that if we take the average monthly cost of materials, for example, that would be 5,732. Labor, it would be 2,806. And again, this is developed average monthly cost here because we may need to use average monthly as a cost in our, uh, and determine how much will be paid during each month. So here's a summary of the monthly cash payments. So we start with month, uh, monthly material purchase. Right? And we have 5,400 in December. January will be 5,732. Again, we are including December because some of December's uh, payment may occur in January. So we have the average monthly purchase uh, to be 5732 for the six-month period. Remember, we have just worked that out right here. So payment for those, um, payment for the prior month's purchase. So what is this saying is that payments for material are usually made in the month after those purchase. So, for example, December's purchase will be paid for in January, and then January will be paid for in February. February will be paid for in April. March will be paid, uh, sorry, pay, February will be paid for, paid for in March. March will be paid for in April. April will be paid for in May, and May in June. So, monthly labor costs will be uh, paid for in the month in which it's occurred. So remember, we have our uh, monthly labor cost right here in our table, and we also have our overhead cost for uh, monthly overhead cost as well. So we can determine that both of them will be paid in the month in which they actually occurred. So we have general administrative and uh, expenses, and we, it's anticipated that the total would be 12,000 over six months. And if it's 12,000 over six months, we can assume that it could be evenly throughout those six months and become 2,000 each, each month. Interest expense uh, will be paid for uh, twice uh, will be paid for one for the year at the end, uh, one for the period, it's not a year, it's over a six month period, and so it's twice a year, it will be paid for uh, in June and say December. And so, because we are looking at a period from January to June, it will be here in June. Then we have taxes, uh, which will be paid for four times for the year are in our case here, um, because we are looking again from January to June, it will be paid for twice, and that would be in March as well as in June. And then we have cash dividend of 1500, which will be paid for once, and that 
for the angel. So dividends will be paid again twice for the year, and in our six month period, it will be once. So that's fifteen hundred angel. Okay, so we have one other item which is new equipment purchase. So we have there'll be a new equipment purchase in February as well as one in June. So the total for each payment for each month is now given. So now we know how much is it that will be paid every month for uh, what cash will be flowing out for the month. So we know what the receipt will be, what cash will be flowing in. Now we know what cash will be flowing out. So here we can now determine the amount of cash flow. So in January, we know 12,600 cash coming in. And in February, and we know total payments would be 11,200. So here is 11,220. And that would be the outflow. So the net cash flow would be 13,800. That's 1,380. How about February? February, we have a total receipt of 14,000, total cash payment of 20. So there's a net outflow of 6,452. And the same thing could be found for March, for April, for May, and for June. So, now we'll have to develop a cash a cash budget with borrowing and a repayment provisions. So we will take into account where there will be shortfall and so the company in, in that case uh, needs to borrow um, for the shortfall as well as uh, in time when there is uh, more than enough cash the company will make repayments. So in January we have a net cash a flow of positive 1380. It was beginning cash, which um, is assumed that Coleman has a beginning cash balance of 5000 on January 1, 2021. And it desired minimum balance ending cash would be 5000. So it's desired to always have a minimum cash of 5000. And it started the, the, the this period with 5000. It's desired to have a minimum balance of 5000. So we take those two into account. So in January we have a beginning cash balance of five thousand. So that cumulative cash balance would be six thousand three eighty. And there wouldn't be there's no loan, nor are there any repayment. So we have an ending cash balance of six thousand three hundred and eighty. So remember that in February there was a shortfall, so we have a, we start with a negative cash flow of 6,452, but we have a beginning cash balance of 6,380 from the previous um, month, from the month of, of January. <coughs> and so that this is added to that 6,452, negative 6,452, and it produced a cumulative cash balance of negative 72. So, the company will therefore need to make a loan or to go to the bank and uh, acquire a loan. So, how much would the company need to acquire? So, first of all, it has a shortfall of $72 and it also wants to maintain a minimum cash balance of 5000 So, therefore, company goes out and acquire a loan of 5072 5000 for its minimum cash balance and 72 for its shortfall of cash in February so that's what uh, is represented here as uh, a loan and this loan since it's the first time a company is borrowing it would be uh, the cumulative amount would be the same. It would be 5,072. So how about March? So in March, we have 
as you can see again there was a, a negative uh, cash uh, flow of 3,955 but we have an open balance of 5,000 carrying from February so that means that the cumulative cash balance would be 1,045. So we have 1,045 as a cumulative cash balance. We need to maintain 5,000. So we have to go out and borrow enough to increase our, to increase a cash balance of 5,000. So 3,955 is borrowed and that would increase the cumulative loan balance to 9,027. So how about April? In April, again there's a positive cash flow of 4,548 and we have an opening cash balance carrying from March of 5,000. So the total would be 9,548 cumulative in April and given that we only need to maintain 5,000 as the minimum cash balance we can now repay up to 4,548 of the loan so therefore the loan balance is now reduced to 4,479 so in me, there's a positive cash flow of 10548 and we have an opening cash balance of 5000 So that's total 15540 And the remaining loan amount is repaid here. So that's why when it's bracketed, it means that it's a repayment. So it's repaid. And so the loan balance is reduced to zero and uh, the company has uh, in May the ending cash balance of 11,669. So in June company has a negative cash outflow of 11,553 but it started at a month with 11,069 cash balance and that uh, will have a, a, a deficit of 884 and so the company again needing to maintain its minimum cash balance will have to go out and borrow 5,884 which will now be cumulative cash balance at the end of June. So we can see how from this we can determine how each month will how in each month the company will develop its its schedule of payment it will de develop its schedule of receipt and from that it can determine um, what would be the cash flow for each month how much would it need to borrow if it needs to maintain uh, uh, a particular amount each uh, each month so we are going to stop here for today and next week we will continue by looking at uh, uh, the balance sheet and looking at a uh, percentage of sales method and of course how do we calculate funds required if there when a company um, has some projection in growth and so on. So we will stop here for today. So see you in the next tutorial.